I've got a captive daughter here. I wouldn't let her out. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of those kids that you've had over the years as a teacher at, uh, what's that school's name? Bijou Community School. Here in Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe. That's right. What about something about a spelling contest that your mother and I keep telling everybody about? Well, that was um, several years ago. That was probably in the early 90s. Um, I was the coach of the first and second grade spelling bee team. And so, of course, I started Did you volunteer? Yes, I did. Just like my dad, volunteer work, yes. And so I had about um, 25 kids to start with, primarily uh, Filipino, Hispanic uh, origin um, students. And then we uh, called it down to about 12, and six kids made the team. And it turns out that my top six spellers were um, all of Filipino descent. Um, hey, you, what we heard and the way we tell this story is you realized those Filipino parents would drill those kids on those lists if you sent them home, so you might have just fudged a little and made sure they were all Filipino kids. Well, it was... They had to score every day. They, every time they came to the spelling bee practice, their words would get graded, and it was the ratio of how many words correct out of how many words were given, and those children did well, and you definitely could see that they were absolutely getting home support. So was the big contest among schools at your place? Well, the, the contest that's the memorable one was the county spelling bee, which was uh, 20, 25 to 27 schools of, in the area, so for a wide area. And when we went down um, to that spelling bee, you know, all my Filipino kids, most of those kids were first generation, uh, they were, most of those children were born in America, um, or maybe not, but English was a second language for them, but they spoke great English, they obviously could spell, uh, they were doing great. So we get down to this place, uh, Placerville, and we're waiting for the spelling bee to contest to start. Well, the way they do it is they lined up these chairs in rows, and your school would sit in a row, and another school in another row. So we get in there, and we're... Uh, uh, let me comment. So not like a traditional spelling bee at all. No. All five of those kids wrote the answer down for each of those competing schools and they on each word the monitors reported that this school had five correct three correct four right. whatever it was right so as we as we got in there because it was new to them they were nervous i had them practice sitting in their chairs to see what it would feel like before it started and i let them get up and we had a little powwow and when we were over there one of my little filipino um boys looks across the audience and he says miss riggs they're all Americans but us. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, look, they're all Americans but us. And I said, well, honey, I, I think what you mean is, I said, you're an American too. You're a Filipino American. I said, but I think what you mean is those are blonde-haired, red-haired, blue-eyed, white-skinned Americans, and you are dark-skinned, dark-haired, dark-eyed Americans. And he was not too sure about that at the time, but those kids did an awesome job. And out of those 27 schools, uh, we placed third in that spelling bee, and we had to go to a tiebreaker, which is where they had to spell words that they hadn't even practiced. So uh, they did very they well. How come they hadn't practiced them, teacher? Because they take from the follow, they take from the next team's list. They take from the grades three, four. So and the, and, the, and what they had to study was a packet this big. With yeah, like 25 what, words what I remember is you hadn't even dreamed they'd get that far, and you hadn't given them those advanced no, words. No, I hadn't. No, I hadn't. But they did very, very well. Oh, I was so I proud was, of you and of them. Yes, they but, were very proud. And incidentally, if you uh, viewers don't know it, the Filipino school system must be really good. Wichita, Kansas, the area where we go every summer, has been hiring most of their math teachers now from the Philippines because they get a higher quality math teacher if they hire a Filipino than if they hire an American from the meager supply of American trained math teachers. Yep. They, it, was, it was a pleasure, pleasure to teach with those kids. Well, I'm proud family. of them and proud of you. And I have a question, how do you think we're done on time here? I bet we have three and a half minutes. Well, now. Those kids would be out of high school by now, wouldn't they? Do you ever see any of them? Hey, is there, are you commenting on my age? Watch it. 
Do I ever see any of them? Yes, I do. I do see some of those kids. In fact, I was at a uh, local restaurant. This is a small town. And I recognized the mother of one of those students, one of my Filipino students. Her name was Grace. And then she finally caught on that it was me. And I was looking at the uh, young adult male with her, and I... I knew I knew that had to be Joshua, but I couldn't really believe it because he was so much older and I hadn't seen him in a long time. But then I recognized his ears. He kind of had these ears. And um, so his mother elbows him and says, look, it's Miss Riggs, it's Miss Riggs. And he turns around and looks at me and he goes, oh. and I thought, what testament is that when you see a, like a 19-year-old boy touching his heart and then came and talked to me for about 20 minutes? So it's wonderful to see him and them, and and he's still friends with those same kids from first and second grade that way back then, those same kids. He told me all about the different ones, and one of them was the Emperor. Remember Dustin? Yes, Dustin, and Dustin has been in ROTC at the high school, and he is studying uh, to go to the police academy, and he's just out of school, doing very well, thinking about going into the Marines first. We better wind this one up and do another one. Yep. Bye.